Hello, my name is Felicia Douglas, and I'm going to talk today about um, a very prominent woman during the Revolutionary War, Mercy Otis Warren. She was um, a writer and historian of that era. Um, she was most noted for her um, book titled History of the Rise, the Progress and Termination of the American Revolution that she wrote after the Revolution um, ended. So she was born um, in 1728 um, to Colonel James Otis and to Mary Otis, who actually was a direct descendant of one of the Mayflower passengers. She, uh, they lived in Plymouth, Massachusetts. That's where her and her husband, James Warren, <clears throat> resided after they got married. But her family, um, before she was married, was uh, very, very prominent politically. Her father was um, in the Massachusetts House of Representatives. He was a very outspoken leader against Thomas Hutchinson, the colonial governor of Massachusetts at the time. Um, and actually, um, after she got married and during the Revolution, she wrote a lot of poems and poetry um, against Thomas Hutchinson, the governor, of things that she did not agree with, um, very patriotic um, words that came forth from, um, from those poems. Like I said before, she married James Warren. They settled in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, her husband was very, very prominent in politics as well, like her father. Um, he was elected to the Massachusetts House of Representatives, became the Speaker of the House and President of the Massachusetts Provisional Congress, served as the paymaster in the Continent Continental Army um, during the time of the Revolutionary War. Um, during the Revolutionary War, she was very prominent in politics. She did not participate because um, she was a female, but she was right alongside her husband. And her and her husband today would be known as a very strong power couple um, in relation to, to politics. So <clears throat> um, although she didn't make such a difference in women's suffrage and women's rights and different things like that, she did um, have a strong voice in the revolution. And we can pick up that later um, from her, her different writings that she wrote after the revolution that she um, had actually um, signed on as she had, she had written them. So they weren't done anonym anonymously. But um, she was friends with um, one of our leading founding fathers, John Adams. And it was surprising to me to, to hear this because John Adams, um, we always think of him as just the second president of the United States, one of the great founding fathers, a great voice, a great leader. Um, but she was one of his advisors and they were very, um, they, you know, wrote a lot to each other, very, uh, very correspondent with each other. They had a strong relationship, her and her husband did with um, him and his wife, Abigail Adams, a very strong relationship. She was there at the first meetings of the Committee of Correspondence, which, um, as history is said or told, uh, presumably that she, that it was that community correspondence was uh, made in her house, her and her husband's house at the time. So they, um, you know, a lot of things happened around her. She was in the center of a lot of things because she knew a lot of the founding fathers. She knew Samuel Adams, John Hancock, Hunk, Hancock Patrick Henry, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, um, and especially John Adams. Um, Adams actually wrote, tell your wife, um, in a letter to, um, her husband, she, he said, tell your wife that God Almighty has entrusted her with the powers for the good of the world, which in the cause of his providence, he bestows on a few of the human race, that instead of being a fault to use them, it will be criminal to neglect them. So he was a very strong supporter of her, of her and her writing. Um, she was educated not in Harvard like her brothers were, but she was educated by one of the tutors that had actually tutored the brothers. So, um, and she goes on to write a three volume um, literary history about, called The History of the Rise, Progress and Termination of the American Revolution. She goes on to, um, to publish in 1788, um, a pamphlet called Observations of the New Constitution, which I was surprised because she took an anti-federalist view, which was very strongly opposed to John um, John Adams. So like I said before, she was a prominent, prominent figure in the American Revolution as an historian and writer. Um, so that's it. That's Mercy Otis Warren.